Okay, let's continue our discussion of counting outcomes. In the last video, we discussed how to determine an outcome and how to determine how many possible outcomes we could have. In this video, we're going to discuss other possible ways that outcomes can be determined. And we're going to introduce two new words, a permutation and a combination. Really, it's very simple. It comes down to whether you're concerned about the order in which things are counted or not. A permutation is an arrangement of objects in which order is important. A combination is a selection of objects in which order is not important. Notice the word arrangement. Anytime you arrange something, that means that you're placing importance on different items happening like sequencing or various other things like that. Let's go back to what we were talking about in our first video when we talked about the pick three. And I use this as an example because it's something that's in our society. If you can, are concerned, let's say for example, you picked the number two, three, four, then obviously the chances of you getting the two in the first uh, jar and the three in the second jar and the four in the third jar, and it had to be in that particular order, the odds are much uh, smaller that that will happen if you don't care about the order. For example, if the number 342 came up or 432 came up, then your chances of that happening would be increased compared to if you wanted it in a particular order. Okay, something else that came up in our first video had to do with when we were rearranging letters in a word. The word door, for example. As you can see, we had two O's in the word door. We didn't know which O we were referring to when we picked one. And because that becomes redundant or kind of arbitrary, we're not sure which one we're picking, we had to divide that out. And so that the total number of possible arrangements decreased from 24 down to 12. Whereas when we dealt with the word house, there weren't any letters that repeated or any letters that could be confusing. So therefore, we ended up with a simple factorial, five factorial, which became 120 possible outcomes. That's the general idea of what we're going to use now. A permutation, mathematically, would look like this. N would be the total number of items you have to pick from. R would be how many items you actually select. The P, of course, just tells you it's a permutation. So to be clear, N, your larger number is always your total, because you can't have more than your total, is on the lower left hand or subscript to the left. R is subscript to the right. A combination, obviously, with the C has the same N and R, where N is the total number of items and R is the number of items selected. So let's take a look at a quick example here. Let's say that we're asked to find the permutation of four items taken three at a time. Okay? The formula in your textbook and what you would use to calculate it more formally is n factorial or the total number of items factorial divided by n minus r factorial. So if four is my total number, it'll be four factorial divided by 4 minus 3 factorial. 4 minus 3 is 1. So this simply just becomes 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 divided by 1, which is 24. So there's 24 possible outcomes when you take 4 items and pick 3 at a time. What about the combination? Well, its formula includes the permutation formula. If you look at this part right here, this is just basically the permutation formula. But we're also going to divide by R factorial, meaning what? We're going to eliminate all of those arrangement issues. We don't care about order. So this would be 5 factorial because there's 5 total items divided by 5 minus 3 factorial times 3 factorial. 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 divided by... 2 factorial, which is 2 times 1, times 3 times 2 times 1 gives me 20, excuse me, divided by 2, which is 10 possible combinations. Let's do a little bit of practicing with this just to get used to the 
uh, symbols just to get used to the um, new uh, presentation that we have here. So using my formula, the permutation of four items taken four at a time, it's going to be n factorial divided by n minus r factorial. n of course is 4 factorial all divided by 4 minus 4 factorial. 4 factorial is 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 and we learned in our last video that 0 factorial is actually equal to 1 so we're going to end up with 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 all divided by 1 which is simply 24. So there's 24 possible arrangements taken four at a time and in which case you could even make this shorter because if we have the same number of items, total items as we're selecting, that simply will be in fact four factorial by definition. Take a look at example number two. We have five items taken two at a time. So we're going to end up with n factorial divided by n minus r factorial, which is going to become 5 factorial divided by 5 minus 2 factorial. 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. 3 minus 2 factorial is 3 factorial, so that's going to be 3 times 2 times 1. And as you can see, we can just reduce from the threes down and we end up with 5 times 4 or 20. Now is there a faster way to do this? And the answer to that question is yes. Since we already know that the number of items basically is a factorial and if we selected all of our items it would be nothing more than a factorial problem. What we can do then is take our total number of items and if you see it down here this is a shortcut we're simply going to write it as 5 factorial, which is 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. But you see, we're only going to select 2. Now, since order is important, the very first thing that I would do when I go to pick, would there's going to be 5 items to pick from. So what I'm going to do is pick the first 2. And so therefore, my total number of possible outcomes here would be 20 five total items taken two at a time. Again, understand what's happening here. We'd have to start with five items because there are five total items. If I selected one, that would leave four left. When I make my next selection, that is all that I'm going to do in this problem. So therefore, I'm done and I simply multiply it together. If you're not comfortable with that shortcut, you can go through the formula. But let's try our shortcut with six total items taken four at a time. So again, we're going to see that it's going to be six factorial, which is going to be six times five times four times three times two times one. And what we're going to do then is take the first four of those. Again, we start with the total number that we had, which is six, and we're going to count down one, two, three, four. And then we're going to multiply these together and we're going to end up with 360 as our possible outcomes. What about a combination? Let's do some practice with a combination. Again, what are we going to end up with here? All right, so using my formula, it's n factorial all divided by n minus r factorial times r factorial. n is 5. So we end up with 5 minus 4 factorial times 4 factorial. Now multi multiplying this all out, which you're more than welcome to do, this would be just 1 factorial or 1 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. The 4, 3, 2, 1 will reduce and I'm simply left with 5. Now, is there a faster way to do this? The answer is yes. And what we're going to do again, and if you'll just keep in mind, the first part of this is your factorial, excuse me, is your permutation part of the problem. In essence, we need to find all the possible outcomes, but then we're going to divide out 
the order part. We don't care how they're arranged because this is a combination. Okay? So keep in mind from our first video with the cat problem. Here we had all these different arrangements of the letters, but if we don't care how the letters are arranged, because it's just a combination, then we don't need to concern ourselves with order any longer. That's what the R factorial is doing for us. So what we're going to do with combination of six items taken three at a time is we're going to treat this as a permutation of six items taken three at a time, and then we're going to divide out the part that is repeating or the part that is the order part of it all. We don't need to concern ourselves with that anymore. So watch what happens. The permutation of six items taken three at a time is six times five times four times three times two times one, all divided by r factorial, which is three times two times one because r is three in this case. Now, you might be thinking, I need to cross these out. That's not correct because we haven't finished the permutation part in our numerator. They only want the first three. So we're going to start with the six and we're going to simply count down six times five times four. And so we don't really need to concern ourselves with the three, the two and the one at all. This would simply become six times five times four all divided by three times two times one. And you can do it your own math if you want. Three times two is six and that will eliminate the six in the numerator and we end up with 20. So instead of using a calculator, you can do this by hand. Now again, if you're not comfortable with this, you could simply use your formula n factorial divided by n minus r factorial times r factorial. Let's take a look at this last example down here and see if we can speed up the process. We have nine items taken five at a time and they want us to figure out what is the combination here. So this is going to become 9 permutation, 5 items taken at a time, all divided by R factorial, which R is 5. So this is going to become, again, I only want the first 5, so it's 9, 8, 7, 6, 5. Notice I only took the first 5 of the 9 that were my possible uh, outcomes in the permutation. And now I'm going to divide it by 5 factorial. So I'm going to get 9 times 8 times 7 times 6 times 5, all divided by 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. Notice the 5s can reduce. I can also take the 3 and the 2 and get rid of the 6. And I can take the 8 and divide it by 4. And if I go uh, 9 times 7 is 63 times 2, I end up with 126 possible combinations of 9 items taken 5 at a time. Now let's see if we can use this information, make an application. An application means that we have to make decisions when we apply it to the real world. So we need to decide if it's a permutation or a combination first, then we want to calculate. Okay, so here's an example. To complete a test, you must answer eight questions from a list of 10 questions. And how many ways can you complete this test or this example? Now, the first thing we need to ask, is this a combination or a permutation? Well, if you've ever taken a test before, you don't have to follow it in a particular order. You can work from the back to the front or you can start in the middle. You can start anywhere you want. So there is no particular order. So since there's no order, this is a combination. So this simply becomes 10 items taken eight at a time and it's a combination. So let's see if we can use our shortcut here. What would our shortcut be? And so we could treat this as permutation of 10 items taken eight at a time divided by 8 factorial. Now keeping everything straight here, we're going to count down from 10. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5. That's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, but I need 8. 
times 4 times 3. So there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 terms. Okay, again, why did I do that? Because I wanted the permutation of 10 items taken 8 at a time, all divided by 8 factorial. So we're going to get 8 times 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. Well, as you can see, the 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3 can be eliminated in both the numerator and the denominator. And so what I'm simply left with is 90 divided by 2, which is 45. So there's 45 possible ways that a student could answer 8 questions from a list of 10 on a test. Take a look at the second example. 52 athletes are competing in a race, and how many ways can the athletes finish first, second, and third? There are no ties allowed. So when you answer a question like this, does the order matter? Well, if you're running a race, you definitely want to finish first, so therefore order does matter. There can only be one person in first, one person in second, and one third person in third. So when that first person crosses the finish line, if there were 52, now there are 51 athletes competing for second place. I hope you understand what that means. When that second place winner crosses the finish line, now there are 50 athletes competing for third place. So this is going to be 52 permutation of 3. In essence, we're going to pick first, second, and third. All right? So we're simply going to take 5, let's see, 52 times 51 times 50. And when we multiply that together, we are going to end up with 132,600. Let's take a look at this last problem down here. This one's a little bit different. There are 16 players on a baseball team. The coach will select four players as pitchers and three players as catchers. How many possible outcomes does the coach have to select a pitcher and a catcher? Well, let's think about this for a minute. I don't think the coach, even though these are pitchers and catchers, and there can only be one playing at a time, I'm interpreting this as the coach is making a selection of a core of pitchers and a core of catchers. So since there is no order implied here, meaning that there's just one pitcher in the game, and there's no order implied here that there's only one catcher in the game, the determination here is we're thinking about this being a combination, that he is selecting these players from the group of 16 to be pitchers. Okay? So with that in mind, we're treating it as a combination we got 16 players and we're going to select four. Now that's just to be our pitchers. So that's going to be 16 times 15 times 14 times 13. Again, we want four of them. All divided by four times three times two times one. That's going to give me 1,820 possible ways that a coach could select four pitchers out of 16 players. Now what about the catchers? Well, that's 16 possible players. And you have to keep in mind that a pitcher could be a catcher. And a catcher could be a pitcher. So it's going to be 16 times 15 times 14. All divided by 3 times 2 times 1. Which is going to end up being 560 possible ways that we could pick three people to be catchers, three players to be catchers on a team of 16. Well then what's the total number of possible outcomes that this coach faces if he wanted to pick a catcher and a pitcher? We're going to multiply them together. So it's going to be 1,820 times 560 or 16 C4 times 16 C3 and that will give you 1,019,000 200. And now you know why coaching can be 
very exhausting sometimes. I hope this helps with you, helps you when you're trying to count outcomes by determining if order matters or not. Remember, if order matters, it's a permutation. P. If combination, if order doesn't matter, if it's combination, then it's C, N, C, R. And you have the option of using a formula for a permutation or a formula for a combination. I hope this helps.